Hello everyone. The point of this video is to briefly go through the process I've been using to create these foam D20 dice from these 3D printed molds. For this video, we'll be using the things we've got here on the table. The supplies are pretty basic. We're going to be using Flex Foam at 10 from SmoothOn, Easy Release 200 from Man Release Technologies, a 3D printed mold, some small cups to help measure our material, some plastic knives to help stir our material, and a little bit of water and this black sharpie to help us mark the cups to make sure that we're using the correct amount of the material. Now when I created this mold, I made it keyed so that it would only go together in one way. Before we're ready to start the molding process, we'll need to add a heavy layer of the MAN 200 mold release to the inner surface of the mold. The instructions say to spray it on in one heavy coat, then wait 10 minutes and spray on a second light coat. I follow these instructions fairly accurately. To ensure that we're using the same amount of both parts of the mold mixture, what I'll do is pour some water into the first cup, mark its level, then pour that same quantity of water into a second cup and mark the level on the second cup. This way we make sure that we actually have an equal line on both cups. Well, so much for that idea. Guess we're starting over because I just spilled some of the water. But I'll just throw out that first cup, pour what's left into another cup, and voila! Two cups with equal volumetric markings on the sides. The secret here is this is all really a lot less precise than you might think it is. As long as we have equal parts of A and B in the mix, the Smooth On Foam It products I found are pretty forgiving. So after making sure we've shaken all the water out of our cups, we're ready to start pouring the two parts of the mix. We'll start with part A. It needs to be shaken up really well to make sure that it's all thoroughly mixed internally. Then we'll pour it into one of the cups. We'll do the same thing with part B. Part B is much thicker, more molasses-like. With our two parts all measured out and my glove on, we're ready to start mixing our materials together. Before I start this process, I make sure I have everything I need standing by. In this case, I need this giant clamp. You'll see why in a few minutes. Back up mold, check. Stirring knife, check. Mat to catch the mess, check. All right, we're ready to go. First, we'll pour part B into the cup because of its thicker consistency. and make sure to scrape as much of it as possible out of our original mixing container. With all the Part B in there, in goes the Part A. At this point, according to the label on the box, you have 55 seconds worth of pot life before this will start to foam. And in that time, we need to get it mixed up nicely and poured into the mold. No pressure, stirring faster, don't screw up, come on, keep going, make sure it's mixed, all right. I think we're about ready there. I like to fill the mold as much as possible, right up to the parting line at its lowest point. This foam at 10 is supposed to expand something like six times in volume. But I found that by overfilling the mold and creating some pressure inside of it, we get a much better skinned surface, that kind of outer layer that we can then later go back and paint and do things to. Once we've got the mold full, and I've figured out which way the top goes on, that big clamp is now finally going to come into play. The clamp is going to hold the top onto the mold and keep the pressure from pushing the two sides apart. There is a pressure relief hole on the side of the mold. 
so that nothing dramatic happens if the pressure gets too high inside the mold. For the early part of the curing process, as the foam is expanding, I'm going to cover the pressure reliefs hole with my finger. That lets me control what's going on inside the mold and feel how much pressure is coming back out. This next segment is about as exciting as watching urethane foam cure, so we're going to speed it up a bit. After a minute or so here, I'm going to remove my finger and see what's happening with the material inside. It's not quite cured enough to where I'd like it to be, so I'm going to cover the pressure hole back up and give it another minute or two. After about three minutes, the material is starting to harden and take on shape. You can see in this piece in my fingers that it's become really tacky and is starting to retain its shape as opposed to move like liquid. At this point, we're ready to set the mold aside for about 10 minutes. After about 10 minutes, we're ready to demold. You can tell because the foam arrets leaked out around the edges of the seams, which I believe is called flash, has hardened up to the point where it's no longer sticky. So now it can be safely pried away from the mold. We'll have to clip a little bit of the foam out off the pressure relief hole with this knife to allow it to come out without tearing. And there we have it, yet another test version of my D20 mold. I should point out that this is a test because this is only a 20% scale version of what I ultimately hope to construct. This basketball size mold is one half of the giant D20 mold that I'd like to finally build. The other half is going to take another 47 hours to finish 3D printing upstairs on the Z18. I hope everyone has enjoyed this video and maybe learned something new or useful. Have fun and make something awesome.